Jenya and this is Jenya's kitchen. Today we're going to make quite a complicated recipe. We're going to make bilishi, which is going to be dough with meat inside. It's going to be a little bit open for the meat to cook through and we're going to fry it. And we're going to start with making the dough from scratch. I'll see you at our mixing bowl. First thing we're going to put in is a cup of warm milk. I cooked it in the microwave for about 45 seconds. And this is just 2% milk. So we're gonna put it in. The next thing we're gonna put in is a tablespoon of regular white sugar. I get the full spoon. Oh my goodness, there we go. We're gonna get about, this is a half a teaspoon of salt. And here I have a small packet of East of East, it's rapid rice. So let's shake it, shake it. And just pour it in. All right. It's actually starting to bubble right away. I'm afraid to show it to you because I don't want it to stop working. But I am going to whisk it just a teeny bit just as a sugar and salt uh, mirrors together. This is it. I'm gonna whisk it probably a little bit longer, just like for another minute, and I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes um, near my stove, even though it's not super warm right now, just in case for the uh, yeast to start to activate. I'll see you then. To be exact, 12 minutes have passed, and I'm gonna show you what the yeast did. It totally activated. So next thing we're going to do, we have a tablespoon here and we have olive oil and we're going to put some olive oil in our dough. I might need more olive oil, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to work on this, but we're going to need about three tablespoons. Next ingredient is flour. So I have a half a cup, so I know how many I use, because I never actually measure it. I just keep going until I see that it looks normal. So I'm going to use the spatula to kind of mix it in. More. All right. What we wanted to do is we wanted to come into a nice lovely dough. better and better. If you want, you can use a, one of those stand-up mixers or your regular mixer with a hook um, attached to it. I'm just using this for right now because I don't like it touching me. I don't like this sticky, sticky dough. Okay. At this point, we're at two cups of flour. I think I am going to get into this. See, just move it around and press it and fold and press. That's what you do, and usually with a dough, you fold and press. All right. It looks like it pretty much came together very nice and lovely. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to cover it and let it sit and think about its behavior somewhere in a warm space. So you can uh, put it in a oven that was used before and that's still slightly warm or you can use it, uh, put it on the top of the stove after the oven's been used. So it's up to you. Our apartment is pretty warm, so just gonna sit somewhere. We're gonna cover it with a towel, and we're gonna come back in about 45 minutes to an hour to see it rise and see what we're gonna do next. About an hour has passed on our dough. Look how high it rails. And it's beautiful, and it's coming off like this. So we're gonna get just a little bit of flour. And just work it back a little bit 
just kind of punch it back. And get the flour so it doesn't stick to my hands. You can do a little bit of oil too. It's up to you. But the dough is just beautiful just beautiful so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to sit it back for you know a little bit longer with towels covered and we're gonna start working on our meat so the stuffing we have about pound and a half of ground beef 85 15. i have a whole regular onion here about medium size and what i'm gonna do with it is i'm going to shred it using the food processor I'm not sure if you want to stay for it or not. It's going to get a little loud. But there it goes. So while this thing is coming down and all the juices will sink in, we're going to add about a teaspoon and a half of salt. about a teaspoon of ground black pepper. I'm gonna come back to you in a few minutes when I wait for the onion to come down and spray us with juices. So let's start. We have our meat mixed in with the onion. We already cried, it's all good. We're gonna get our bowl, bowl of dough, which while it was waiting, it blew up again. Gorgeous, beautiful dough. We're gonna cut half of it the rest away and whenever we're not using we're gonna cover we're gonna roll it so things don't get stuck to us we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil on my hands some on the desk it's all good okay now we're gonna have semi-equal portions. I'm trying my best here, people. <laughs> and I'm going to try and press it down. You can use a roll pin into a circle. Okay. Next thing we're going to take is we're going to take some meat. And then we're going to bring the dough back and pinch it around, but we're still going to have our middle exposed. And I'm going to kind of smoosh it around a little bit so my needle is not so big. Try to make it circle. Not the prettiest, but believe me, the yummiest. Let's do this again. Let's press one down. Get some meat. Bring it together. This is it. We're gonna continue working on them here and I'm gonna meet you back at the stove and we're going to fry them. So I have our pot with um, about, I think, three quarters of a cup of uh, canola oil on a medium heat, and the oil should be pretty hot. So there we go. I can hear them. We're gonna let them go until we can see the brown coming up a little bit up the sides, like the golden brown, and that's when we're gonna slip them. And this is a secret, that's why we, why we go and meet down um, the juices, I promise you, will stay all in there. But what we're trying to do is to cook that meat first because you know it's raw in there and we don't want to eat raw meat. So we're going to let it cook for about another 30 seconds to 45 seconds and I'm going to come back to you so we can flip. So they are looking gorgeous on the sides here so I'm going to flip them over. They look beautiful. If you feel like they're cooking too fast, lower your heat and that will make a difference. But now we're gonna cook them on the other side. They are looking amazing. This is gonna be so good. So another minute or so, 
and it should be done I think it's not a lot of meat in there you don't have to worry about it it's gonna be great so I'm gonna meet you back when here I have a whole pile of them and we'll have another most delicious taste test from all the dough and I think I have just teeny bit of meat left we got this huge pile of delicious delicious bilishi so I picked one it smells amazing Mmm. Look at the fluffy dough. I meat is super juicy. It's just so good. This is perfect. They're perfect by themselves with salad, with soup, anything you want. This is amazing. I'm always so nervous when I work with yeast dough, and it turned out just wonderful. I mean, this is what you want it to look like on the inside. I'm Jenya. This is Jenya's Kitchen. Don't forget to subscribe because there's gonna be a lot more of deliciousness like this. This is my take on Russian Bilashi.